This advice is for your own good. If you want to live on the sea without affiliating with anyone, then your best bet is not to disobey. Our master is an emperor of the pirate world, one of only four in existence. So if she says you die, then you die. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we are going to be diving headfirst into one of the most powerful and influential individuals ever seen in the series, the Emperor, Charlotte Lin Lin. Charlotte Lin Lin is an exceptionally tall and well-rounded woman who made her first appearance in the series at the tail end of the Fishman Island arc. Although she was first mentioned and silhouetted long before then during the Return to Water 7 arc. Or more specifically, she was mentioned by her epithet Big Mom and was revealed to be one of the Yonko, who are considered to be the four most powerful pirates in the One Piece world. As a Yonko or Emperor, Lin Lin presents herself as a terrifying sadistic force of pure strength and many of her actions in the series certainly fall into a heavily antagonistic category. But even with that said, Lin Lin does possess a surprisingly pure heart to dream of building a nation without discrimination and a place where every race in the world can live in peace. How she goes about crafting that is significantly more questionable, but to understand Lin Lin's actions and ambitions, we need to go back in time roughly 63 years, where at the mere age of five, Lin Lin was abandoned by her parents on the island of Elbaf, a kingdom inhabited by giants. Unbeknownst to Lin Lin, this action occurred because she had been banished from her homeland due to her uncontrollable tendencies. You see, even at the age of five, Lin Lin possessed natural raw physical power on par with top tier combatants of the One Piece world. And while she was a delightfully innocent child with genuinely compassionate desires, this strength led to a great amount of accidents and even casualties. A good example of this would be seen on Elbaf, when Lin Lin managed to fracture the bones of a giant whilst trying to kill a mosquito. And that's not the worst of it either, because Lin Lin was also afflicted by a severe eating disorder that causes her to become entirely fixated on a particular food, generally sweet, and will completely lose herself in a terrifying rampage until the food she desires has been attained. Despite all of this though, Lin Lin would be taken in by a curiously kind individual known as Mother Caramel, who ran an orphanage on Elbaf. I say curiously kind because she was in fact in the business of child trafficking and would sell her children off to the world government to become Marines or even Cypherpol agents. However, Lin Lin would prove to be too much for Caramel to handle as she proceeded to destroy an entire village on Elbaf and even kill an elder giant on one occasion, as well as lose herself in culinary bliss on another, which while we never specifically saw this happen, almost certainly led to Lin Lin eating all of the orphanage children as well as Mother Caramel herself. Although Lin Lin remained unaware of the reason for their disappearance and would go on to carry the trauma and heartbreak of this sudden departure throughout all of her adult life. However, there is one person in the world who knows the truth of exactly what happened that day, a pirate by the name of Stroysen, who witnessed the event and would go on to corrupt and use Lin Lin for his own personal quest to gain power. And thus, the Big Mom Pirates were born. However, before we move on, this incident would imbue Lin Lin with a further ability as she acquired the powers of the Soru Soru no Mi, the devil fruit that was previously used by Mother Caramel. Exactly how this happened isn't once again technically known, but it is highly likely to be the result of Lin Lin eating Caramel herself. In any case, the Sora Sora no Mi is a Paramecia type fruit that allows its user to manipulate and interact with souls. For example, the most common use of the fruit as seen by Lin Lin is the ability to take portions of the souls of others or even herself and actually insert them into objects or animals, creating an entirely new life form. In this way, Lin Lin created her three most trusted compatriots, Zeus, Prometheus, and Napoleon. Taking a part of a person's soul in this way also effectively reduces their overall lifespan by the amount of said soul commandeered by Lin Lin. However, there is one caveat for this to take effect, and that is that Lin Lin's target must be afraid of death, which when you're staring down one of the most incredibly powerful people to have ever existed is not too difficult a condition to meet. With this ability in mind, Lin Lin quickly made waves in the world, acquiring a bounty of 500 million berries before she was 18, 18 years old. In her youth, Lin Lin also adopted the practice of not simply raiding islands, but conquering them, which would go on to become her nation of Totterland and built for the purpose of one day achieving Lin Lin's dream of uniting all of the world's races. However, that would not remain Lin Lin's only dream as after she delved into the world of piracy, she was drawn to the desire of becoming the Pirate King. And this was before the Great Age of Piracy even began. However, at the age of 18, Big Mom began to how shall we say, craft her own crew by beginning a cycle of giving birth to a total of 86 children over the next half a century. Many of whom were twins, triplets, quadruplets, and even one massive set of decuplets. These children would go on to earn Lin Lin the epithet of Big Mom, as well as become the most trusted officers within the Big Mom Pirates, and play a gigantic role in her ascension to the position of Yonko. As a mother though, Lin Lin is severely lacking to say the least. Having maintained the mental capacity of a child and choosing to rule over her crew with the classic tried and tested method of fear. And if it ever came down to it, Lin Lin would take no issue with killing one of her own children. Not only that, but her multiple husbands who contributed to the creation of said children were treated even worse, being discarded immediately once their role was complete. And it was through breeding a culture of fear in this way 
way, that Linland successfully built one of the largest and most formidable pirate crews that this world has ever seen, and it would be put to good use in order to achieve her various dreams and desires, which in addition to uniting all races and becoming the Pirate King, included hosting various tea parties at regular intervals where she would gorge herself on a wide variety of delicious goods. In fact, these tea parties served to inform Linland's major acquisitions, as any islands within her territory would be charged with producing a specific type of food or food accessory in exchange for her protection. For example, amongst the territories in Totaland are locations such as Cacao Island or Cutlery Island. But during the two year time skip, Linland's influence spread all the way to Fishman Island, who were offered protection in exchange for producing vast quantities of candy. And as an emperor, Linland would also go on to develop a vast army and intelligence network, the likes of which in theory could rival that of the world government directly. As a result, Linland grew familiar with the various other great powers of the world, such as fellow Yonko Kaido, whom allegedly owes Linland a great debt. In fact, the affiliation between these two in particular seems to run quite deep, and it has been heavily implied that they were both part of the same pirate crew at some stage in the past, which as of this recording is known only by the mysterious name of Rox. But Linlin also built herself a series of powerful connections within the underworld of One Piece, including relationships with the president of the World Economic Journal, Big News Morgan, the queen of the Pleasure District, Stussy, and many, many more prominent figures who have been known to attend her tea parties. In addition to that, Linlin also had a keen interest in allying herself with military might, generally through a political marriage of one of her many, many children. One such example saw Prince Loki of Elbaf proposing to Charlotte Lola. However, she refused the offer and fled the Big Mom Pirates, causing Linlin to lose her chance of making peace with the giant race, as well as acquiring their incredible fighting force. As a result, Linlin hired deranged scientist Caesar Clown to develop artificial gigantification, although his efforts resulted in extreme failure and primarily in the embezzlement of Linlin's research funds. Meanwhile, Linlin had also secured a political marriage with the German Kingdom of North Blue by offering her daughter Charlotte Pudding to be married to one of their sons, Vinspoke Sanji, who was currently serving as a member of the Straw Hat Pirates. And this set off a series of events that saw Linlin's home of Whole Cake Island invaded by a retrieval team tasked with taking Sanji back, as well as one hell of a wedding ceremony which culminated in the collapse of Whole Cake Chateau. But more importantly, the destruction of the wedding cake that Linlin had very much been looking forward to. As such, Linlin went into her trademark hunger tantrum, demanding wedding cake over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, destroying anything that stood in her way. Due to the extended period in which this tantrum lasted, Linlin displayed rapid weight loss and an even greater loss of basic cognitive functions, making her a well and truly demonic force. There was no one within the Big Mom Pirates capable of halting Linlin's rampage, and so it fell to Chef Sanji to recreate the wedding cake, which was able to satisfy her and save the entirety of the Big Mom Pirates from destruction. And from here on out, I'm going to put up this handy little spoiler warning because the next pieces of information come directly from the Reverie and Wano arcs, and they are not minor spoilers. So if you're not keen on being spoiled, just keep this video muted until this warning goes away. I promise I won't be too long, but for everyone else, here we go. Following the events of Whole Cake Island, Linlin developed a strong desire for vengeance against Luffy, and so she left Totterland and followed the Straw Hats to Wano. However, her ship failed to make it to the land of the samurai, and Linlin fell into the ocean, eventually washing up on the shores of Wano with no memory of who she was and having reverted back to the innocent persona of her childhood. Some more fun facts about Charlotte Linlin. In regards to Haki, Linlin has shown the ability to use both Armament and Conqueror's Haki, the latter of which being one of the most powerful uses we've seen in the series thus far. To add to the list of Linlin's various psychological issues, she is also wildly delusional and views herself as a kind queen, often living out intricate musical numbers within her own psyche, unable to distinguish them from reality. Throughout the series, Linlin has been subject to a few errors regarding the romanization of her name and epithet, the latter of which has been romanized as Big Mam on two separate occasions, while her actual name was once depicted as Rin Rin on her bounty poster. Speaking of bounties, while currently Charlotte Linlin's bounty is unknown, it was revealed in an article published in V Jump that Linlin and her contemporary Kaido's bounty are both at least over two billion berries. And finally, a truly useless fact. During the Fishman Island arc, Sanji fantasized about what Big Mom could look like, choosing to depict her as a classically One Piece attractive redhead with a cupcake. But that pretty much does it for Charlotte Lin Lin. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.